What is going on, investors? Hopefully, you guys are doing well out there. It's time to Netflix and chill on some Q1 earnings from the streaming giant. Look, year to date, shares of Netflix have popped up over 25%. And even over the last year, one of the best performing stocks, certainly as you look at streaming entertainment and media, this is by far the best performing stock, up over 83%. But can can Netflix keep the good times rolling? Can the good times continue to stream over at Netflix? We get some clues when we look at the Q1 results. We'll go through all the different numbers. I tell you what, Netflix, let's give them some credit. They have some of the best or the best shareholder letter. This is written all in plain English here, all that you can just go through and read almost like a storybook. I love how they present things. We'll take a look at how this first quarter compares to previous quarters. We'll also look at the Q2 forecast as well. Company gives us, they don't no longer gives us a subscriber number. Although if they did, I tell you what, those are popping. And when we get to that, we'll see where the subscriber growth is popping because it's really important for Netflix, right? They can charge you $17 on average for a Netflix subscription here in the United States. And then in the Asia Pacific region, they can only charge you $7 and 35 cents. So depending on where the subscriber growth is, really has an impact on revenue. We'll show you where it's coming from. And then we'll show you the numbers as well. The revenue, the profits, the cash flow. Where are all these profits going? Guys, spoiler alert, there's a lot of profits. And we'll show you where they're going with Netflix. And we'll also show you this from a technical perspective. We're seeing in the after hours, it is early, but shares of Netflix are trading down about 3.5% in the after hours. So we put a fake red candle on there and we'll talk about where Netflix could be heading from a technical perspective. Now, those Q1 numbers came in $9.4 billion worth of revenue. That was nearly 15% growth. They beat expectations by about $90 million. Now, the all-important Q2 guidance came in. Revenue expected to be about $9.5 billion. That would represent about 16% growth year over year. You're seeing an acceleration there. In Q2 of last year, 2.7% growth year over year on that revenue side. Then it went up to 7.8, then 12.5, then to 14.8 this quarter, all the way up to nearly 16% next quarter. Consensus was for $9.28 billion, which would have been 13.7% growth. So what you're having with Netflix is a complete rating of the next at least three or four quarters with this company because these quarters are so strong. And I'm going to show you the subscriber growth is coming from a very, very strong region for this company. And so I think you're going to have to re-rate the Q2. I tell you what, they're about to put up a quarter in Q2 at $9.5 billion consensus before these announcement was 9.28. It's already ticked up to 9 three or $9.53 billion. Q3 expected to come in at 9.8. I think you're going to be probably closer to 10. And as you look into Q4 and Q1 of next year, you're probably poaching $11 billion worth of revenue. You got a 35 forward PE on this one, but you're growing in the mid teens and it's pretty dang consistent. That's not, not wildly overvalued. So if shares continue to slide for Netflix, this could be a great buying opportunity. Now, when we come over here and look at the guidance, we did have a little bit of shrinkage in terms of operating margin, at least for the upcoming quarter. Notice our operating income in Q1, which we'll go through in depth here in a moment, was $2.6 billion. The upcoming Q2, not expected to be as high, despite higher revenue, higher year-over-year -year growth there. You're expecting operating income to come under the 2.6 you just printed to 2.5, slipping those operating margins to 26.6. So it could be that some investors out there are looking towards that. Now, what we're also seeing is a massive acceleration in paid memberships. And if you go through the shareholder letter, they really talk about that their ad membership, this is the ad-based tier at Netflix, grew 65% quarter on quarter, nearly 70% sequentially with over 40% of all signups in our ad markets coming from our ad plan. So the company is finding huge success for that. And it's, I think it's just kind of scaling up its ad business this is going to be one of the premier ad companies in the world. They are still maybe slightly over a year into their ad plan. 
This is going to become obviously much bigger as other advertisers pull their budgets. So typically in the ad space, you're committing your budget uh, well ahead of time. And now you're going to see the success that Netflix is having. And so you're going to start pulling ad or maybe even creating more advertising opportunities for Netflix, maybe pulling away from traditional cable or mail or other types of advertising that you do. Because look at this globe, global paid membership growth. It was 4.9, then at 8, then 10.8, then 12.8, then 16%. I think we're going to look back at some time with Netflix and say the pivot to an ad based tier was maybe as equally as impressive as a pivot this company as you recall many of you that are my age or maybe even slightly older remember this used to be a DVD company and a mail in DVD company and then the company famously pivoted their business model to the streaming model. And I think we're seeing a pivot here on par with that as it's certainly driving subscriber growth, revenue growth, and profit growth. And where are those subscribers coming from? Because I tell you what, if they come from the APAC region, well, you're having trouble squeezing out dollar for dollar. But no, we actually see their strongest region in terms of total assignments happens to be Europe, Middle East, and Africa, but they can only charge about $11 per subscriber. They grew 2.92 million subscribers. Look at the United States though, just slightly behind in total paid memberships, but 2.5 million signups, not as strong as the previous quarter, 2.81. But look at the growth on the average paid membership up 7% from last quarter. You're at 16.64. Last year, you're at $16.18 for an average Netflix membership. Now you've crossed the $17 mark, I think probably for the first time. You weren't able to do that in Europe. You are able to do it in Latin America based on FX neutral, which it was not. Apparently you've got some currency fluctuations in other countries out there. You're also not able to do that in Asia Pacific. So you're seeing strong subscriber growth. And a lot of it is concentrated here in North America and Europe, the two strongest markets from a paid subscriber perspective. Now, these financials, I tell you what, if you're Disney, if you're certainly Warner Brothers, if you're Paramount, you, you are hiding your kids and you're hiding your wife because these are absolutely phenomenal. $9.4 billion. We talked about how that was a 15% growth. We're trending towards $9.5 billion in the upcoming quarter. By the end of the year, you're probably up over $10 billion worth of revenue. Last year, you were closer to $8.2 billion. And it's you have an economy of scales here. Look at your cost of revenues. They only went from 4.8 up to, we'll call it five. So just up marginally. Your marketing spend also not up dramatically. Your technology and development or your R&D also not up dramatically. And finally, your general administrative cost basically flat. And so your operating income over the last year went from $1.7 billion boom, all the way up to $2.6 billion. Even over last quarter, it's up over from $1.5 billion. Hold down to net income and $2.3 billion in a quarter for this company. And again, this, this is not AI. This is not NVIDIA, right? Okay, you go pull up the stock chart and the financials of Paramount, Disney, any of these other companies. None of them are doing this. And so it's that's what makes this even more impressive. You went from one three on the net income all the way up to two three. So you flowed over a billion dollars. Yeah, over a billion dollars to the net income side when you bolted on 1.2 to the top line. So a lot of this revenue growth that is coming in, it's flowing all the way to the bottom line. They earned 528 diluted last year. It was 288. Guys, this is something to get excited about. Now, cash and cash equivalents, $7 billion in the most recent period. They do have some debt. Some of you might say, well, they got $13.2 billion in debt. Looks like they paid that down. We'll see that when we get to cash flows. Well, they have all these streaming assets, okay? The, the way this company makes money, right, is they have to buy content. And so I'd rather them not really have cash. I'd rather they be investing this in movies and TV shows because clearly, that is a wildly profitable business. And, and if though that wasn't exciting enough, come over here and look at the cash flows. We got to move me out of the way because this is really worth looking at. $2.4 billion on the net income side. You pull that down again. That's a billion dollars more than last year. You do all this funky accounting stuff and then you get to net cash provided by your operating activities. $2.2 billion. Now it compares relatively favorably to the period before, but you have $2.2 billion of free cash flow that you can use on this company to invest in all types of things. Now they purchased some property, plant, and equipment. 
for 75 million bucks and that's it. So what'd you do? You paid down debt. We saw that up here on the balance sheet. The fact that your debt went from 14.1 down to 13.2. So you paid down some debt in the most recent quarter. You issued some stock likely to executives and different employees and you're just buying back the shares. That's why you had a little bit bigger positive increase in this earnings per share. So as these earnings go up and then you reduce the number of shares, which you see down here, that positively impacts their EPS. So the company could literally be flat year over year on the net income and their EPS would tick up. That's why EPS is not a number and even like price to earnings. It's a little deceiving when a company is doing a buyback. But in this case with Netflix, you're doing the buyback and you're growing the net income. And so it really boosts up your EPS. And so these forward price to earnings, this is all going to be adjusted in the next week or so. You might get south of like a 30 PE on this one, depending on how you think these revenues and this income and these earnings are going to flow through. So the company doesn't have, the company has a lot of positive cash flow, $2 billion. I would expect in the coming quarters, it's going to be in that one seven to 2 billion, over 2 billion dollars and they don't have a lot to do with it other than pay down debt and repurchase the shares that's a scary situation if you're trying to compete with netflix now it's not translating into the stock some of you're going to be like oh well the stock is absolutely getting crushed uh in the after hours well we've been on just an absolute breakneck rally in fact, back in October, we were down here at 344. I mean, October, we're not even talking about that long ago. Back in January, you were at 500. And so the fact that we've rocketed up well over $600 per share, you also had the overhead resistance of the all-time highs, right? About $700 probably gives some investors some second thoughts. You've just been on a massive rally on this one. It is time to take profits. I think we probably returned back to trend. I would say anywhere south of 500 bucks on Netflix. This just looks absolutely spectacular. I personally think they're just beginning to scale up their advertising business. This is going to become one of the world's best places to advertise. And I think they are just getting things going. And the fact that the subscriber growth is coming from the North American region and even the European region, that gives you hope that more and more revenue and profits are coming. And the company is pivoting into live sports. You got Jake Paul and Mike Tyson boxing it out. They got the WWE. They're probably going to make some play for some other live stuff. This is a company that's got a lot of good stuff going on. And on top of that, their competition is literally falling on their face, folks. That was Netflix for Q1. We'll be back again tomorrow for the Feng Stock Recap Show. Hopefully you join me then. Until then, good luck with your investments.